Our protagonist, Yuel Han, notices that there are no people on campus. Buses are also not coming, so he walks back home. He goes back home and notices that his parents are also missing. He also realized that time didn't change at all when he left school. The sun hasn't moved either. Time has completely stopped. Just then, a girl appears and claims that time has stopped, except for Yilhan. Yilhan calls her an intruder, and the girl shows that she is obviously an angel. She introduces herself as Lita. She came to inform Yilhan that he had been left behind. Yilhan gets confused, but he does remember always being forgotten and left behind as a child. He cries his eyes out. Lita claims that all humans were sent to another dimension except for him, because there will be a cataclysm that will fall on Earth. Earth is leveling up to the next stage, and mana will be released. An archaic record will also come to Earth, and humans can sense it as status. Once mana is released, monsters will appear on Earth. Humanity will be wiped out, that's why God stopped time on Earth and sent the humans to another world to train and adapt mana. Lita is proud of how God is merciful, but Ilhan says otherwise. Lita thinks there might be a mistake. Ilhan's stealth skill was able to evade God's attention. Ilhan calls God stupid and whines to go to the other world. Lita assures him that God gave him a bonus instead. Lita tells him to wait 10 years and she'll take care of him. Ilhan wonders what to do for 10 years, and Lita suggests training his body to be physically strong. Ilhan throws tantrums, and his lonely life on Earth begins. Five years easily passed by, and Ilhan has been working hard at the gym while others are building up their mana and powers to fight monsters. Lita asks if Ilhan is not bored doing the same thing, but Ilhan doesn't have a choice. Lita can notice Ilhan's amazing improvement and patience. Lita is the only person Ilhan can talk to. She always prepares meals for him. Ilhan then decides to learn martial arts through the internet, but he wonders how electricity and internet servers are still running. Later, Ilhan starts practicing spear arts, and Lita reminds him that there are five years left. And just like that, four years passed by. Lita then suggests spurring with her. Ilhan talks like he is worried about hitting her, but he throws a punch full of grudges. However, Lita is a fighter. The promised ten years passed by, and Lita is now confident that Ilhan can murder a low-level monster easily. Lita tells him that he did a great job. Ilhan wonders if they'll meet again. He goes outside and waits for the other humans to return to Earth. However, nothing happens, and even Lita is confused. No one is coming back. Ilhan gets mad, and Lita claims there must be a mistake. Ilhan then throws tantrums again. However, more years passed, but the people did not return, and Ilhan continued training. He stopped counting after 50 years. He claims that he has already forgotten his mother's face. Lita only apologizes as Ilhan complains about the time. He gets bored of martial arts and Lita worries. She doesn't want Ilhan to fall into despair. Ilhan claims that he'll also read books. Lita feels assured and claims that it is a good idea. Ilhan has read all kinds of books and embarked on a journey around the world. He visited several countries, learned languages, and read all the books in the world. A very long time went by, and he finished reading the last book on Earth. Lita is amazed that Ilhan didn't fall into despair after several hundred years. Lita then earnestly prays to God to return the humans to Earth before Ilhan falls into despair. Ilhan now can hunt wild animals on his own. He also started learning butchery and blacksmithing. Ilhan wonders if he can prevent the monsters from appearing if he murders all animals. Lita claims he must murder what she approves of or the equilibrium of the world will be destroyed. She also almost slips out the monster's true identity, and Ilhan almost finds it out. Ilhan continues butchering and Lita is amazed at how Ilhan easily picks up new skills. She can't believe he perseveres for hundreds of years. She finds Ilhan incredible. After some time, Ilhan tries his butchering skills on a sperm whale. Lita gets mad because they are an endangered species. 300 years passed by, and he finally mastered butchering. He takes blacksmithing next, but his hands are no good at all. He keeps on failing until he can make a shabby sword after five years. Lita grabs it and claims that it is too dull. She takes it as a commemorative item. She flies away with it and hugs it with a smile. Ilhan then continues making weapons in many forms and kinds. After hundreds of years, he created the perfect spear. Even Lita is amazed at its quality, but she claims that there will be better magic stones that will appear. Ilhan claims that he can just make a new one. Lita is fascinated by him. After that, Ilhan starts picking up martial arts again. 
Lita can't believe how ill Han experienced a lot of progress in a single body, but she knows that he will soon reach his limit. She hopes Isle Han can experience something new like opposite sex relationships. Lita blushes at that thought. She beats up an unlucky bunny while reminding herself that she is an angel, and she can offer herself if it is to help Ilhan as God's order. Ilhan calls her and she feels awkward getting near him. Ilhan then notices something and Lita panics. Ilhan points out that the sword is glowing. It flies upward and Lita panics seeing the first sword of Ilhan go away. Just then, Ilhan notices that he is now wearing the clothes he had before the humans disappeared. Lita grabs the sword, and she gets blocked out from Earth. The Great Cataclysm has arrived. Lita gets sad at the thought that she can't even properly say her goodbyes. She hugs Ilhan's sword and claims she fell in love with him. She regrets not getting a kiss. Ilhan is also sad that they are parting ways. He wonders if they can meet again if he becomes a high-ranking being. Humanity comes back to Earth and Ilhan checks his status. He hears that the others only spent 10 years. He also notices how the others can't sense him. He then discovers his stealth skill at max level. What is worse is that he can't turn it off. He is really fated to be alone. He goes home and sees his mom, Yisul. He hugs her, and the sun sets for the first time in 1,000 years. He is glad to see dinner being cooked and his father, Yan Han, reading the newspaper. The couple talks about the areas they were transported to. They ask Il Han where he was sent to. He panics, knowing that he got left behind. He claims he was sent to a place without a name. His parents start talking about mana and complain that the younger one should be the only one sent to the other world. Ilhan accidentally slips out that it will destroy the balance. He then claims that it was just his theory. Yi Siul then urges Ilhan to hunt monsters for riches, and Yang Han agrees. Ilhan then confesses that he can't use mana. Yi Siul then tells him to just focus on his studies, and Yang Han blames their genes. Still, he is happy to have his parents back. After dinner, he discovers his spear in his room. It should have been gone when the world returned to normal. He tests it out and checks its stats. He is not sure if 800 watts is a lot or not. He then browses the internet to gain information about the other world. One can gain a class if he reaches level 10, and a second class at level 50. The third advancement is also possible at level 100. He then suddenly misses Lita. Suddenly, a voice claims that Lita will be happy to hear that. Ilhan gets surprised, and someone appears, claiming to help Ilhan gain mana. Ilhan then discovers a small angel who introduces herself as Ertha. Ilhan is shocked to encounter another angel. Mana is hard to manage. That's why God sent Ertha to help Ilhan. Ilhan claims that he doesn't help. Ertha claims there is someone out there who pleaded with God to help Ilhan. Ilhan realizes that it was his beloved Lita. He then asks why Lita didn't come. Ertha claims that the higher-ups are worried that an angel and a human are becoming too close. Ertha then claims that Lita's reports are different from what she can see. Ilhan can easily destroy a low-rank monster with his fist. She remembers Lita crying that Ilhan is still helpless after a thousand years. Ertha realizes that love can change a person. She then tells Ilhan that she will support him with mana usage. She claims that her presence around Ilhan will make him accustomed to mana. Because he already spent time with Lita for 1,000 years, he can get mana by the next year. Ilhan then complains that he is monitored 24 7 and can't watch his treasures. Ertha claims that she doesn't care what a lower being like Ilhan does. Ilhan shouts that he misses Lita but tells him to give up. The next day, Ilhan goes to school and encounters patrolling soldiers. He attends class, but he is still invisible. Ertha claims that his stealth skill is far superior to others. Ilhan uses his skill to eavesdrop on others to gain information. He hears about the Empress, who is famous in another world. He also hears about dungeons, and Ertha explains that it is a trap that lures the monster and traps them inside. Humans can easily go in and out of it, though. Ilhan then suggests keeping the monsters in there forever. However, the dungeons cease to exist after some time. Plus, there are monsters too powerful to get trapped, monsters that are strong enough to break barriers and create their own dungeons. Ertha then tells Ilhan that hunting monsters can train your mana. The monsters right now are still weak, but will get stronger after some time. Ilhan worries that he can't defeat one who is mana-less. However, Ertha points out his good physique and claims that Ilhan can defeat monsters up to level 25. Ertha senses something and claims that Ilhan can test it now. Just then, giant insects appeared outside. 
Everyone panics when they see monsters and dying people outside. Ilhan breaks a chair's leg and swings it around. Ertha is impressed by his craftsmanship, which is totally different from what Lita reported. Ilhan prepares three more and wonders if he can hide his identity. The insects wreak havoc outside, and a masked Ilhan comes and immediately murders one monster. He gains level and stat points, especially mana. More insects come, and he easily destroys them. Flying insects come and completely obliterate them. A mosquito attacks him, but it can't penetrate Ilhan's body. Ertha realizes that Ilhan's body has surpassed the limits of a human. Just then, he gets surrounded by insects, but he is still able to wipe them out. A bolt of lightning appears, murdering the rest of the monsters, and a masked wound appears. He gets fascinated, but Ertha tells him that there are still monsters. The masked woman easily disintegrates the insects with her lightning, while Ilhan continues slashing them. The army arrives, but they are shocked to see that the monsters are now dead. They discover Ilhan dismembering the monsters for mana stones. He pulls out one and just discovers the crowd watching him. The Empress approaches him and asks Ilhan to help her dismember the monsters. He asks for the dividend, and the Empress offers 40% to Ilhan. The crowd recognizes her as the Empress based on her lightning. The people then talk about Ilhan shooting beams, using a lightsaber, and using an axe. He is sad that he is misunderstood. He continues butchering and gives the Empress her share. He tries to go his way, but soldiers menacingly approach him. However, the Empress interrupts them, and Ilhan loads up his loot. He suddenly becomes invisible to others, and people misunderstand him as a fast person like Usain Bolt. He cries about being unnoticed. Hertha tells him not to worry about it. That night in a park, Ilhan checks his loot and wonders if they can make equipment with it. Hertha suggests getting an expert's help, but Ilhan proudly presents himself as the truest master on Earth. Hertha suddenly feels mad at Lita. She mentions mana craft, and Ilhan gets excited and suddenly grabs Hertha. Hertha got embarrassed, but she still explained how mana craft works. Ilhan gets excited again, and Hertha gets mad. She plans to go back to heaven to meet Lita. She can't tell Ilhan that she will scold Lita for not looking after her man properly. She explains that you need to create the gear near the mana stone. Afterward, powder the mana stone and sprinkle it on the equipment like salt, and you will get powerful gear. Ertha claims it would be hard, but Ilhan claims that he won't know unless he tries it. Ertha explains further that you can gear with different abilities and effects. Ilhan started making gears, and he created arm and knee guards. He then applies the grounded mana stone, and he imagines the appearance of the gear he wants. Ertha notices that Ilhan's mana stone is not enough, so she helps him by giving her mana. Ilhan succeeded, and he successfully added a scythe to his arm guard. It is reported in the news that the government is looking for the two masked people who murdered the recent monsters. Ilhan is off to school, but his mother Yi Siul is worried for his safety. However, Yi Siul has a skill that allows her to monitor her son's movement around the house. Ilhan feels uncomfortable with it, and he tells her that he will run if he sees a monster. On the way to school, Ertha reminds him that the government made a unit of ability users. However, Ilhan is uninterested, though he wants to see the Empress again. Ertha asks if he likes her, but Ilhan claims he does not. She teases Ilhan that she might not be sterile. Ilhan shouts in frustration, but no one notices him because of his max-leveled stealth. Ilhan thought of a reason, Leitha. Ertha concludes that Ilhan lost interest in human women. Changing topics, Ilhan is interested in the Empress' impressive mana usage. However, Ertha thinks Ilhan is more impressive for processing monster materials without mana. Just then, Ertha senses a nearby pack of wolves led by a high-leveled wolf. Ilhan complains that things are moving too fast, and Ertha even notices something is wrong since yesterday's event. Ilhan gets mad at her for being calm, and Ertha menacingly claims that she won't show her worries in front of a lower being. Ilhan suddenly misses Leita. Ertha then confesses that Earth is not normal right now, and she asks for Ilhan's help. She explains that when God sent humans to the other world and left the animals on Earth, an unknown error distorted the flow of time on Earth. Ten years on the other world became 1,000 years on Earth. Even though the Earth has reset, the monsters underwent a dramatic change. In conclusion, the monsters on Earth right now are stronger than the ones in other worlds. The heavens are moving to restore the balance. Until then, they need Ilhan's help to exterminate the monsters. Ilhan brings out his spear and attacks the wolves. The wolves attack, but Ilhan easily murders them. 
Just then, citizens are being attacked by more wolves. Ilhan jumps into action and destroys the wolves. The crowd recognizes him as the sun gain bolt from the recent incident. Hertha congratulates Ilhan for having fans, but he claims that he doesn't care about them. He reaches level 10 and is asked by the system to choose a class. Just then, a wolf instructed the others to attack Ilhan. Ilhan finds it fascinating that they are smart. He murders the wolves because he keeps getting experience points. Just then, a wolf takes a citizen hostage. However, Ilhan claims it doesn't change anything now. Onlookers check out what will be Ilhan's move. Ilhan throws his spear and obliterates the wolf. Hertha now worries that Ilhan threw out his weapon. However, Ilhan uses his fist to murder the wolves and shows the results of his training with the Queen of Combat. Watching Ilhan, Hertha thinks Lita raised a monster. However, she notices that his moves are not light as teaching. Ilhan destroys the rest of the wolves, and a gun is suddenly pointed at his head. Ilhan gets surrounded by the army, but the citizens condemn them. The female lieutenant is surprised that Ilhan has already defeated the monsters. She approaches Ilhan, apologizes, and talks about how they want to recruit him. However, Ilhan has already disappeared from their sight, although he is still around butchering the monsters. The lieutenant discovers him, and he immediately declines whatever she wants to say. He declines to join them because he feels like things will get annoying for him. Hertha tells him to work alone. Ilhan realizes that taking all the corpses alone is too much for him, so he asks the army if he can sell the materials to them. The lieutenant agrees, but Ilhan won't include the mana stones. The lieutenant films Ilhan butchering the monsters and sends the video to someone. Her higher-up orders her to bring Ilhan to them, even if it means seducing him. The lieutenant thinks it is impossible, and Ilhan asks them to pay him in cash. Ilhan wonders if the mana stone is tasty, but Eartha strongly warns him not to eat it. Ilhan is then given cash, and the female lieutenant tries to seduce him, but Ilhan ignores her. He distracts them with a device, and he disappears from their sight. Ilhan then walks away. Ilhan checks the classes he can choose. Eartha recommends being a lancer or grappler because of Ilhan's skill set. Ilhan thinks being a lancer is good because he likes using weapons and creating them. Suddenly, a new choice appears, and Ilhan shouts that it is the Blurred Lancer. Eartha claims that it is a unique class, and he must choose it no matter what. Ilhan then chooses it, and his attack increases when attacking in stealth mode. However, Ilhan realized something. Blood and Blurred are spelled the same way in Korean. Eartha also just realized it. Just then, Ilhan's body and stats changed, except for his title with passive stealth. A person with a first class will take a long time to level up. However, Ilhan is not normal. Ilhan runs again to hunt for monsters as Heaven's proxy and wonders if the Empress is also one. Eartha just tells Ilhan to work harder so he can get better rewards than the other proxies. Just then, he discovers a massive brown bear and brings out his spear. He then confronts the bear. Ilhan equips his mask and activates his stealth. He jumps over the bear and attacks its head. However, one strike was not enough to defeat the bear. He then tells the army and citizens to run away. The bear gets distracted by the fleeing people. Ilhan moves to attack the bear again. The bear fights back, and it loses Ilhan. Eartha tells him to activate his stealth back. Ilhan wonders if his current weapon is enough. His body is the same as what he built up for the last 1,000 years. He remembers how Lita compliments him for cutting a strand of her hair when he attacked. He focuses on one point and attacks the bear on its head. The bear stops moving and Ilhan manages to bring it down. The bear's gigantify skill turns off and Ilhan starts butchering it. Just then a car arrives, and Eartha sees that they are ability users. The ability users are surprised to see that the monster is already defeated. They recognize Ilhan by his nickname. One of them doubts Ilhan's ability to murder the monster alone, but the others are amazed at him. However, Ilhan hates small talk and ignores it. Yujun tries to shake hands, but Ilhan ignores him. He then claims to be stronger than anyone else, including Ilhan. Ilhan then scolds him for looking like a rival. He points out that Yujun should focus on becoming the best version of himself. However, his words are only in his thoughts. A few moments later, a soldier approaches him and discusses something. Ilhan is advised to download an app that can show where the monsters are appearing. He leaves, and another soldier asks if it is fine not to recruit Ilhan. The lieutenant claims it is better not to force or offend Ilhan. Meanwhile, Eartha commends the lieutenant's wits. She thinks Ilhan will wipe them out if he is forced. 
The lieutenant understood what was best to do. Just then, monsters appear. Ilhan moves and destroys three nearby monsters, but he only gains one level. Hertha claims that his unique class requires more experience. At least Ilhan has a lot of money now and plans to buy property. However, it is not smart to do it because they will discover him. Hertha offers to erase the official's memories this time, and Ilhan thanks him. The next day, a system appears announcing that humans can go back to the other world to receive proper compensation for Earth's error. Ilhan is unhappy that he'll be alone again. Later, Hertha explains that it is a safer way for others to gain experience. Ilhan is mad that he is left out again. He feels depressed that he can't go to the other world like the others. Hertha tells him it will be possible if he becomes a greater being. He can go to the other world and the heavens. Ilhan then realizes that he can see Lida again. Hertha realizes that she is currently acting as their messenger of love. She suddenly feels sour. She then tells Ilhan to get stronger, but it might take millennia. He goes out of his room, and the whole family hears the news about martial law being declared in Korea. Just then, Ilhan suggests his parents go to the other world. His father, Yang Han, claims it is pointless because he can't get stronger there despite his efforts. Ilhan claims that the monsters are getting stronger on Earth and that the other world is safer. Yang Han agrees now and wishes Ilhan to get stronger. He teleports away. Ilhan starts to eat, and Yisuo claims she knows that Ilhan is the masked person. Ilhan asks how she knows, and Yisuo claims that she just knew. Ilhan is surprised by his mother's skill. She then warns Ilhan to be careful, not with monsters but with humans. She also left the dishes to Ilhan. Hertha also leaves to report to the heavens. Later, Ilhan goes to a storage unit he recently bought to use as his workshop. He checks his current materials and realizes that it will take a long time to process them. Hertha arrives and claims it will be easier with magic. Ilhan turns and gets surprised to see Hertha in human size. She then asks for his hand so she can give him rewards. A system appears and announces that he is the most successful among agents. Ilhan obtains the Eternal Flame. Hertha tells him to look at his furnace. The Eternal Flame always burns, and it is a precious flame from the heavens. Ilhan is happy to receive it. Hertha claims that's what she asked Lita. Ilhan is happy, while Hertha curses the long-distance couple. Ilhan is also given a quest since he couldn't go to the other world. He is tasked with creating dungeons on Earth. He is confused about why they chose him. He then realizes that he is being used for their purposes. He bursts out with his complaints. Hertha explains that the monsters on Earth somehow became resistant to God's power. Ilhan is the only person on Earth who can build a dungeon. Ilhan is shocked that Hertha is praising him and finds her suspicious. Hertha promises that there will be rewards. She further explains that they will have nowhere to go and that humanity will suffer as a result. Hertha brings out the materials that Ilhan can use. Ilhan is also given tools. He is happy to receive it, but Hertha corrected him by saying that they are only letting him borrow the tools. Ilhan now wonders how he can make dungeons. Hertha brings out a blueprint. Ilhan needs to create a magic tool that attracts the monsters and transforms them to surround the area and become a dungeon. Ilhan knows that this task is going to be hard, but he is excited about the rewards he will receive. Hertha assures Ilhan that he will get the best rewards. Ilhan then starts crafting, and Hertha hopes she didn't make a mistake. She wonders what happens if Ilhan chooses to become a blacksmith instead of a lancer. Ilhan might be able to create weapons that can challenge the power of the gods. Ilhan managed to create the basic shape, and he hopes he won't mess up the next step. He starts with full concentration, and Hertha realizes that this is how Lyta felt with Ilhan during the past millennia. She smiles at Ilhan, but later thinks there's nothing to it. Just then, Ilhan claims that it is now complete. Hertha is surprised. Ilhan reaches the maximum level of blacksmithing and gains the title of Creator of Legends. Ilhan is mad that he is left out again. He feels depressed that he can't go to the other world like the others. Hertha tells him it will be possible if he becomes a greater being. He can go to the other world and the heavens. Ilhan then realizes that he can see Lita again. Hertha realizes that she is currently acting as their messenger of love. She suddenly feels sour. She then tells Ilhan to get stronger. But it might take a millennium. He goes out of his room, and the whole family hears the news about martial law being declared in Korea. Just then, Ilhan suggests his parents go to the other world. His father, Yang Han, 
claims it is pointless because he can't get stronger there despite his efforts. Ilhan claims that the monsters are getting stronger on Earth and that the other world is safer. Yan Han agrees now and wishes Ilhan to get stronger. He teleports away. Ilhan starts to eat, and Yisuo claims she knows that Ilhan is the masked person. Ilhan asks how she knows, and Yisuo claims that she just knew. Ilhan is surprised by his mother's skill. She then warns Ilhan to be careful, not with monsters but with humans. She also left the dishes to Ilhan. Ertha also leaves to report to the heavens. Later, Ilhan goes to a storage unit he recently bought to use as his workshop. He checks his current materials and realizes that it will take a long time to process them. Ertha arrives and claims it will be easier with magic. Ilhan turns and gets surprised to see Ertha in human size. She then asks for his hand so she can give him rewards. A system appears and announces that he is the most successful among agents. Ilhan obtains the Eternal Flame. Ertha tells him to look at his furnace. The eternal flame always burns, and it is a precious flame from the heavens. Ilhan is happy to receive it. Ertha claims that's what she asked Lita. Ilhan is happy, while Ertha curses the long-distance couple. Ilhan is also given a quest since he couldn't go to the other world. He is tasked with creating dungeons on Earth. He is confused about why they chose him. He then realizes that he is being used for their purposes. He bursts out with his complaints. Ertha explains that the monsters on Earth somehow became resistant to God's power. Ilhan is the only person on Earth who can build a dungeon. Ilhan is shocked that Ertha is praising him and finds her suspicious. Ertha promises that there will be rewards. She further explains that they will have nowhere to go and that humanity will suffer as a result. Ertha brings out the materials that Ilhan can use. Ilhan is also given tools. He is happy to receive it. But Ertha corrected him by saying that they are only letting him borrow the tools. Ilhan now wonders how he can make dungeons. Ertha brings out a blueprint. Ilhan needs to create a magic tool that attracts the monsters and transforms them to surround the area and become a dungeon. Ilhan knows that this task is going to be hard, but he is excited about the rewards he will receive. Ertha assures Ilhan that he will get the best rewards. Ilhan then starts crafting and Ertha hopes she didn't make a mistake. She wonders what happens if Ilhan chooses to become a blacksmith instead of a lancer. Ilhan might be able to create weapons that can challenge the power of the gods. Ilhan managed to create the basic shape, and he hopes he won't mess up the next step. He starts with full concentration, and Ertha realizes that this is how Lyta felt with Ilhan during the past millennia. She smiles at Ilhan, but later thinks there's nothing to it. Just then, Ilhan claims that it is now complete. Ertha is surprised. Ilhan reaches the maximum level of blacksmithing and gains the title of Creator of Legends. Ertha is surprised that Ilhan is already done with his task. She didn't even notice that five hours had passed. Ilhan throws it at her, and Ertha sees that the basic dungeon is done. She is surprised that a human can create it perfectly. She praises him, and she will now call her fellow angels for the mana craft. However, Lita is not among them. Lita then calls over three angels. Ilhan can't believe he is seeing these beautiful entities in front of them. Ertha then tells Ilhan to focus on having the will to complete the dungeon. The angels touch Ilhan, and they start sharing mana. Ilhan gets surprised by the intense pressure. He focuses on mana crafting the dungeon. The white-haired angel is surprised that a human can stand up to them. The black-haired angel claims his pride is hurt seeing Ilhan is doing well. The green-haired angel finds Ilhan interesting. A bright light shines, and the dungeon is complete. The angels are surprised that Ilhan succeeded on his first try, and the dungeon also has alpha and beta options. Ilhan is confused, and Ertha explains that those are additional options that appear randomly. It is rare to see them on the first try. The angels praise Ilhan. Ilhan then joins them in setting up the dungeon. They go to the nearby mountain, and Ertha throws the dungeon core. Ilhan is confused that it just disappeared. Just then, the ground shook, and monsters in the vicinity were moving in the same direction. Ilhan pities the monsters that they are marching toward their destruction. God has left Earth alone for thousands of years. Good thing Lita was beside Ilhan. Ilhan wants to get stronger for his own freedom. The next day, it is reported that dungeons have appeared in various parts of the world, attracting monsters. Ilhan wonders how his parents are doing. Ertha praises Ilhan's hard work. Ilhan claims he needs to make more and wonders why the angels have gone back already. Ertha claims that the angels need to recharge their mana. Ilhan then mentions that there are other angels like Lita. 
Hertha tells him that Leitha is busy working because of Ilhan and won't be able to see him for the time being. Later, Ilhan goes back to his workshop and Ertha notices the materials he has. She then offers to reward Ilhan for his hard work. She dried and sterilized the monster's leathers in an instant. Ilhan is happy that he can now make boots and gloves. After some time, he successfully created a set of both leather gloves and boots. Next is armor made from bare leather. Ertha smiles as she watches Ilhan enjoy crafting. A day passed by, and Ilhan was successful in creating the bear armor. However, Ilhan strengthens it further using the monster bones and gains armor with better quality. There is even an additional function that makes spikes pop out like a porcupine. Hertha remembers the hidden mantis blade and asks why Ilhan is making these kinds of things. Ilhan claims that it is every man's dream. Hertha calls him nonsense. They notice that there are monster bones left, and Ilhan makes a butchering knife out of them. He even used a skull to make a mask. Ilhan equips everything, and Ertha is shocked at how the mask has made Ilhan's presence weaker than ever. Just then, they hear a loud explosion. A monster appeared, and Ertha can't believe that it hasn't been trapped in the dungeon yet. Ilhan hopes it is not stronger than the brown bear, or he doesn't have a choice but to create a new armor. He then brings out his spear and fixes it. It suddenly gained more attack power after a little fix and Ilhan asks to have the heavenly tools for himself, which Ertha declines. Ilhan and Ertha arrive at the scene and discover a huge leopard. The military can't do anything against the monster. Ilhan also notices awakened ones, but they are far too weak, and others are in the other world. Ilhan wears his mask and runs forward. Ertha warns him that the leopard is stronger than the bear. A tank shoots at the leopard, but the attack is ineffective. The leopard gets mad and grabs the tank, trying to eat it. Ilhan appears and attacks the leopard's eye. He successfully landed a critical hit. People recognize him again, and they are glad that he didn't go to the other world. The leopard throws away the tank, and Ilhan follows it. He slices the tank open and saves the two soldiers inside. They get to the ground, and the soldiers tell Ilhan that they are now his fans. Ilhan senses something and tells the two to run away as the leopard appears in front of them. Hertha warns Ilhan that the leopard has noticed him. Ilhan then tells her not to worry. The military and other awakened people focus their attacks on the leopard while it is distracted. Just then, a bolt of lightning strikes the leopard's wounded eye. A helicopter arrives, and a beautiful woman appears. They can't believe that the Empress has been such a beauty all this time. The leopard attacks Ilhan, but he manages to dodge by jumping. The leopard uses this chance to attack Ilhan while in midair. The onlookers are worried that he might die. However, they see Ilhan curled up like a porcupine. Ilhan feels proud but Ertha tells him that he looks awful. She then uses Lita as a basis, and Ilhan doesn't want to show it to Lita. The monster flails around and charges toward a building for a headbutt. However, Ilhan was able to get out in time. Ilhan steps on the leopard using his spiked boots and deals a critical hit with his spear. He keeps dealing with critical hits, and the others also attack the leopard's legs. Ertha tells him to hurry for the murder because the leopard is evolving into class three. Tentacles appear from the leopard's wounded eye, and Ertha claims that it is mutating. Just then, a lightning strike appears, and Ilhan notices the Empress. Ilhan keeps slicing the tentacles, but they keep on regenerating. The Empress then offers to buff Ilhan. Ilhan agrees, and the Empress jumps off the helicopter. Ilhan gets surprised as the Empress lands in front of him. She tells him that her life is in Ilhan's hands now and starts buffing him up. Ilhan's stats increase, and he also gains a lightning buff. Hertha is surprised by the Empress abilities. Ilhan is not pumped up and attacks the leopard. The Empress suggests murdering it faster, or the military will fire off missiles. Ilhan agrees because his workshop is nearby. He deals a critical and lightning hit. The leopard gets destroyed, and Ilhan gains experience points and levels up. Hertha commends the relieved Ilhan. The Empress asks if it is dead, and Ilhan asks if she didn't gain experience points. However, she is not at the party with him. Ilhan didn't know that there was such a system. Hertha claims that a lonely person shouldn't know about parties. The buff wears off, and the leopard falls. Hertha commends Ilhan again, and the onlookers praise him. However, Hertha notices how unhappy Ilhan is. He claims that the leather is now unusable. Later, Ilhan offers to dismantle the carcass and asks the Empress how to divide it. Then she suggests the division and Ilhan's mood lightens. He jumps on the carcass and gets a mana stone. 
The Empress agrees that it will be enough as his dividend. The others complain, and Eartha feels like an idiot for thinking that others are like Ilhan. Ilhan then remembers his mother's words about solving things with his fists. He offers to give up on the Mana Stone if they defeat him. The others back off and tell Ilhan to get the Mana Stone for himself. The Empress asks for the dismantling of her dividend, and she will share some with Ilhan as payment. Later, the Empress calls for a car to carry the materials, and Ilhan realizes that she is rich. The others also ask for Ilhan's help, but he acts frustrated, making them back off. He offers to help, but with a huge payment. They complain but later agree on Ilhan's terms. Later, everyone fights over the loot, and Ilhan tries to leave. The Empress calls him out and praises his stealth skill. She wants to form a party with him, but Ilhan declines. She then tells him that she will stay on Earth because she is not weak enough to go back and train for the other world. She gives him her business card and leaves. Ilhan finds out that she is Kang Myrae and likes that she is not persistent. Ilhan and Eartha leave as something moves in the leopard's carcass. Later, Ilhan creates more traps of destruction, and Eartha senses a tertiary class forming on Earth. She wonders what is happening, and Ilhan suggests asking God. She complains about how relaxed Ilhan is when the Earth is in actual danger now. The evolution of the monsters is faster than expected, and the balance is tilting. Ilhan claims that worrying won't change anything. He wonders how the other countries are doing. Eartha claims that only in Korea are the monsters evolving faster. Ilhan then concludes that the traps are the cause. Eartha gets surprised and agrees that it could be the trigger. She explains that in other worlds, the monsters only evolve in the dungeons through crossbreeding. If they are not trapped in the dungeon, the monsters evolve by eating humans outside, while the trapped ones get stunted growth. Ilhan then realizes how great he is at creating traps. He then decides to hurry and create more. Eartha comments on how Ilhan enjoys crafting. Ilhan enjoys gaining more experience. Eartha remembers that Ilhan lived alone for a thousand years and is hungry for new experiences. She then realizes she is empathizing with the lower being. However, she doesn't hate the feeling. She then tells Ilhan to grow stronger and gain more experience. He affirms that he will get stronger. That night, the angels came back to complete more traps and later left to create dungeons. Ilhan hopes that the traps are helpful, and Eartha tells him not to worry too much. Ilhan thanks her, and Eartha feels puzzled. Ilhan then goes back to sleep. That night, Ilhan notices something. He asks Eartha if he bulked up. Eartha tells him that it is normal since he levels up. He also claims that he got more handsome, and Eartha claims that his face is irrelevant to her. Ilhan continues flexing, and Eartha gets mad because he is blocking the TV. She drives him off and looks at Ilhan again. She claims that Ilhan can't compete with higher beings. She whispers that Ilhan's greatness is on the inside. She then realizes that she is praising his personality. Lita appears in her mind, agreeing that Ilhan is awesome. Eartha screams as Ilhan dreams of Lita. The next morning, Ilhan wakes up and discovers that his rest skill is at max level. Eartha gets surprised and claims that it is an SSS rank skill. She asks how he achieved it, and Ilhan claims that he researched how to sleep comfortably in the last millennium. Eartha can't believe him and gets envious and amazed. She claims it is only for resting well. Ilhan realizes that there must be something more to it. Eartha then puts up her glasses and starts to explain skill evolution. It is an achievement that offers new paths to the user. In simpler terms, you get overpowered after the skill evolution. Ilhan currently has taijutsu, spear arts, rest, and stealth that are ready to evolve. It will be hard for Ilhan to evolve his taijutsu and spear arts because the requirements are hard to acquire. Hertha then tells Ilhan to check the rest skill. He sees the requirements for evolution and complains about how hard it is to acquire them. However, Hertha claims that they are the easiest for now. She then tells him to check spear arts, and Ilhan gets speechless upon seeing the requirements. Ilhan gets mad and goes back to bed. Hertha worries that Ilhan's leveling speed is slower and he doesn't have mana yet. Even if he gets his overpowered martial arts, other humans will surpass him sooner. If he learns mana, he will become someone who will rule over the Akashic Records. Eartha wonders what kind of revolution Ilhan will cause when he gets stronger. She pauses and decides to stop thinking about it for now, or it will become dangerous soon. Later, Ilhan asks where to get the requirements. Eartha tells him that those monsters will appear on Earth once mana is activated. The news on TV then reports that the leopard's body disappeared along with the people who were sharing the loot. A dungeon might have swallowed them, however, Ilhan knows that there is another monster. 
Hertha is 99.9% .9 sure that the leopard was dead. She claims that there is a 0.01% chance that the leopard was pregnant. Ilhan did take a quick glance at the black figure on the screen. He regrets not completing the butchering, but Ertha tells him that it was the greedy people's fault. She didn't expect Ilhan to be affected. She still can't understand him. They then realize why the leopard acted mad, to hide its baby. Ertha also feels at fault for not thinking about the possibilities, especially since the baby got a stealth skill. Nobody noticed it hiding. The people spent too much time arguing while the baby was being born and later attacked the people around it. Ilhan worries, and Ertha confirms that it might be the tertiary class monster she sensed before. Ilhan turns off the TV and plans to prepare. He doesn't plan to lose to another stealth user. Ertha then claims that it is impossible to excel in all stats, so the monster might have weaker defense or strength. Ilhan suddenly remembers getting help and plans to call someone. Ertha stops him, so he won't get his identity revealed. Ilhan later uses a public phone and calls Kang Myray. Ilhan gets embarrassed introducing himself using his nickname. He then tells her about the news that it is a strong monster with stealth skills. Mirei agrees that it is indeed a dangerous situation. The call ends, and Ilhan is impressed by how Mirei caught on to things so quickly. Her connection to the military and government is more impressive. Ilhan then gets ready for their mission. He later prepares the materials he got from the leopard monster. Ertha wonders what Ilhan will make, as she knows that the steel spear is enough. Ilhan tells her to watch but Ertha gets mad and keeps pulling Ilhan's hair. Ilhan claims that he will make posts. Using the leopard's bones, Ilhan created huge posts. Ertha thought Ilhan was going to make a necklace for a giant, but the satisfied Ilhan tells her that she knows nothing. Ertha gets mad. She thought Ilhan was making spears. However, it is a harpoon. Ilhan tells her that a harpoon can be used to pull the prey back once hit. A harpoon has great penetration, and it is hard to take it out once it is in. Ilhan then makes a rope using the leopard's leather. Ertha asks him if he is using mana when quickly making things. However, Ilhan claims he won't be making weapons if he has mana, and he can just straight up beat up the monster. Ilhan finishes everything, and Ertha finds him evil for using the mother to kill the baby leopard. He then starts to mana craft, and Ertha finds it a waste to use the stones. Ilhan claims that it is for his own survival. He uses the mana craft, and he finishes the hunter's harpoons. Ertha is shocked at how fast Ilhan's mana craft is. It also has more options. It had a high attack power and an increase in critical hits. Ertha's head aches to see the impossible happen. Later, Ilhan contacts Mire again and reminds her not to be rash. Mire wonders why it is still in the area, and Ilhan claims that the monster is looking to avenge its mother's death. Mire asks if Ilhan has plans. Ilhan will make the monster unable to use its stealth skills. Mire then wishes him luck. Ilhan and Ertha go to the monster area, and Ilhan laughs after sensing the monster being confident with its stealth skills. He pins down posts and makes noise on purpose, but the leopard is not attacking yet. Ertha claims that Ilhan's stealth skill is way superior to the leopard's. He even hides his traps. Ertha applauds how Ilhan is suited to be an assassin. Just then, Ilhan notices something. The leopard appears while it is in stealth. Ilhan then gets ready to move. The leopard growls as it walks around. Ilhan notices that he got a 20% bonus damage from attacking while in stealth and using a spear. He throws the harpoon at the leopard with all his might. The leopard gets hit, and it roars in pain. Ilhan can't believe it is a tertiary class monster despite being half the size of its mother. He had the bonus, but the harpoon was only lodged halfway. Ertha says that the leopard has lower stamina and defense because it only specializes in stealth. The leopard now notices Ilhan and attacks him. Ilhan quickly backs off to dodge. The leopard notices that it can't move further. It is because of the harpoon and pole. The rope is sturdy. Ilhan picks up another harpoon and throws it at the leopard, dealing a critical hit. The leopard fights back, and Ilhan's arm guards break. He backs off and cries over the broken equipment. He instantly recovers after realizing that he can fix it later. Ertha feels annoyed that a stupid-looking arm guard helped. The leopard attacks again, but Ilhan dodges again. Ilhan realizes that it was a skill and gets surprised. Ilhan prepares another set of spears and harpoons. The leopard tries to run away, but the harpoons are lodged tightly in its body. It realizes that pulling out the harpoons is ineffective, so it proceeds to cut the ropes. Ertha tells Ilhan to use the remaining harpoons so it can't get away. Ilhan thought that the monsters were just very strong beasts, but it seems like he will encounter more monsters in the future that goes beyond common sense and logic. 
Ilhan dodges another long-range attack and throws off another harpoon. The leopard's foot is pinned down, making it unable to attack with its long-range skill. Ertha commends Ilhan's javelin throwing. Ilhan asks Ertha to call him Ishmael, a character from the movie Moby Dick. Ertha tells him not to let his guard down. Just then, Mayre's voice resounds in the area, asking if that is their target monster for subjugation. She arrives while riding a military car, and she quickly uses her lightning magic. The leopard gets hit and is paralyzed. Myra steps out of the car and asks Ilhan how he managed to capture the monster. Ilhan also comments that it is not a question that a person who just dropped a bolt of lightning can ask. He realizes that Mayre is not a normal hunter. The last attack shows that she is a first-class hunter. However, the leopard gets back on its feet. The two hunters prepare for the second round. Ilhan sets another pole and prepares to throw the harpoon. The leopard tries to move again, but Ilhan throws the harpoon on its other front foot. It roars in pain and Ilhan tells Mire to attack it whenever she can. Mire can attack with powerful lighting magic, but she needs two minutes before she can fire it off. Ilhan then expects Mire to tell him when she will launch the attack. The leopard still tries to get out of the constraints, and Ertha notices that it still has mana. It glares at Ilhan, and Ilhan knows that the leopard is determined to kill him. Ilhan has seen those kinds of eyes before when he was hunting wild animals. It shows their strong desire to survive. The monster gets hit again, and it counters with its long-range skill. It misses, but Ilhan notices how the attack got stronger. Ertha says it is the bleeding buff, mineralization. Mayre fires off a lightning attack, but it doesn't reach the leopard. The leopard attacks Mayre and her driver, but they dodge. It will be hard for her to attack the leopard in this situation. The leopard roars out loudly as it tries to get away from the harpoons. Ilhan commends its determination to the point that the leopard is fine with ripping its legs apart. Ilhan realizes that they really need Mayre's attack. He jumps on the car's roof and asks Myre for a stronger attack. The driver brings out a gun, but Myre wonders if it will be enough. Ilhan claims that this is not the time to think it through. Myre asks if Ilhan knows how to use a gun, and Ilhan claims that he can use most earth weapons. Ilhan moves out with the gun in hand, and Myre can see that he was not lying. Ertha knows Ilhan has hesitated before because the leopard's leather will be messed up. Ilhan doesn't have a choice now because martial arts or spears won't work anymore on the leopard. Just then, the leopard manages to pull out a pole stuck on its foot. Ilhan is amazed at how sturdy the ropes are. Mayre watches the scene as she waits for another minute. Anytime soon, the leopard will also uproot the other poles. Ilhan fires a shot and hits the leopard's eye. The leopard bleeds as Ilhan gains maximum level shooting skills. He fires another one, and Mira can't believe a rifle can cause such damage. Ertha also knows that a rifle can't affect a tertiary-class monster. However, Ilhan's shooting skill has made the gun powerful. Ilhan continues shooting and shouts for Myre's magic. Myre just needs a few seconds, and she starts counting down. Ilhan lets go of the rifle and grabs a harpoon. The leopard gets out of its constraints and tries to attack Ilhan. Myre finishes counting and lets out stronger lightning magic. The lightning magic hits the leopard, and Myre experiences backlash from using stronger magic. When they thought it worked well, Ilhan noticed that it was not over yet. The leopard uses its stealth skill and disappears from Myre's sight. However, the leopard's stealth skill won't work in front of stealth king Ilhan. Ilhan jumps on the leopard and stabs its wounded eye with a harpoon. The monster falls and trembles in pain. Mayre is amazed that Ilhan can see through stealth. Ilhan brings out the remaining ropes and binds the leopard. He maxed out one of his skills again. Ertha wonders why he has not killed it yet. Ilhan must do something first. Mayre arrives, and she is surprised by Ilhan's sudden appearance. He asks to form a party so they can share the experience points from the leopard. Flustered, Mayre forms a party with Ilhan. The system confirms the party formation, and Ilhan gets excited. He sees new windows that can check the status of other party members. Mire is confused and acts surprised that Ilhan is acting like it is his first time forming a party. Ilhan gets flustered and makes up a reason. Hertha can only sigh. Ilhan approaches the dying leopard. He bids farewell and kills the leopard. He obtained nearly 3 million experience points and became level 36. Hertha comments on the huge level jump. 
Ilhan feels nauseous with the sudden surge of the huge number of points. He looks at Mei Rei, who looks like she got the same nauseous feeling. Hertha tells him that he should have gained more, but there are penalties because of Ilhan's title. Ilhan's headache subsides, and he solemnly approaches the leopard's carcass. He apologizes to the leather for damaging it. Hertha gets creeped out, and Ilhan claims that armor made from a tertiary-class monster is a great item. Nevertheless, he continues to butcher the monster. Just then, he discovers a mana stone in its head. Hertha exclaims how lucky Ilhan is for getting mana stones from both mother and baby leopards. The mana stone is as huge as Ilhan's fist. Ilhan suddenly remembers that a tertiary-class monster's mana stone is one of the requirements for evolving the rest skill. However, he is not the only one who subdued the monster. Mirei claims she got one and a half billion experience points. The points given are based on the contributions the hunters made to subdue the monster. Ilhan comments on how helpful Mirei was. Mirei is glad, and she asks for his name, or else she will continue calling him his embarrassing nickname. Ilhan immediately tells her his name. Mayra smiles as she tells him to keep the mana stone, and she will only take half of the corpse if Ilhan butchers it. Ilhan wonders if it is fine. Mayray then tells Ilhan that the most important job on Earth right now is that of the butcher artisan. There is no point in killing a monster if you can't process its carcass. Mayray also recognizes Ilhan's unmatched butchering skills in the last monster raid. Ilhan butchers the monster's carcass while Mayra calls for backup. Hertha can see that Myrae has a lot of connections and suggests Ilhan stay on good terms with her. However, it is difficult for Ilhan to get close to someone. It is painful for a loner like Ilhan. Ilhan later finishes butchering the monster. Myrae orders some people to move the processed materials. Myrae thanks Ilhan for getting rid of the monster before it can cause more damage. Ilhan also thanks Myrae for her help. Myrae also retracts her suggestion of forming a party together. Ilhan gets heartbroken. The introvert starts overthinking things and faults that he might have done. Mirei sighs and claims that she is lacking in many ways. Their gap in strength is too large. Ilhan sighs in relief. Mirei swears to get stronger sooner or later, and she will ask Ilhan again to be her partner. Ilhan wants to think about that when the time comes. Mirei finds Ilhan logical and thanks him again. Their party disbands, and Ilhan has mixed feelings about it. Mirei gets called to leave with her men. Just then, she remembers something. Mirei asks Ilhan for his phone number, but Ilhan hesitates to do so. Mirei smiles and promises not to tell anyone about his identity or phone number. The masked man is too stunned to speak. Ilhan wonders if he really can trust Mirei. Recalling things that happened today, Ilhan decided. Ilhan agrees to give her his contact information. He cheerfully types in his number into Mirei's phone. Mirei thanks him again as she leaves. Ilhan can't believe that a woman asked for his number first. Ertha finds Ilhan pathetic. Ilhan gets offended, and the two argue. Ilhan can't believe he got a tertiary-class monster just like that. He menacingly smiles. His only issue now is the troll's blood, which is not on Earth yet. He cries over the fact that he can't go to the other world. Ertha claims that Earth's mana concentration is getting higher. Trolls will appear on Earth soon. Ilhan wonders if the troll's blood has healing abilities because it is related to the rest skill. Hertha confirms, but Ilhan needs poison resistance to use it as is. The next requirement is troublesome. Ilhan needs to kill a sleeping second-class monster in one hit. Ilhan needs to strengthen his weapon. He asks Hertha for materials, but she immediately refuses. Hertha gets mad and claims they already provided him with the tools. He notices that he can still use the harpoons. As he wonders what to do with the muscles and tendons, the eternal flame surprises him and eats them. The tendons suddenly change form, and Ilhan gets excited. He stops the eternal flame and gets the tendon out of the flame. He gets excited over new material. He finds the new material fascinating and calls it the giant's rubber band. Ertha wonders how Ilhan will use it. It is stretchy, durable, fire-resistant, and also resistant to shock and water. He wants to make a bunker with it. Ilhan explains how it looks and works to Ertha. Its attack power will be top tier and fierce. He pours more tendons into the eternal flame. Ilhan menacingly laughs after finding a new source of power. Ertha's headaches seeing the maniac behind her. She can't believe that Ilhan has a lot of ideas. She is now excited about what will be Ilhan's future projects. Ilhan starts drafting his new weapon. He will use the leopard's teeth as bullets. He wants to strengthen it with the mana stone. 
but Urtha finds it strong enough. Ilhan might need it to fight another tertiary class monster in the future. Ilhan gets worried. Ilhan promises to find a mana stone for the pile bunker. He immediately finishes the pile bunker. He immediately tries it out, but the rubber band is more resistant than expected. He calls his mom as he pulls the rubber band. It took him two seconds, longer than he expected, to put it in the first level. He just realized that it is hard to use it in a real scenario. He needs to call for his ancestors instead next time. He tries it out with the powers of his ancestors, but it takes him more time to load the other levels. The pile bunker's stat window appeared, and it had more options. However, Urtha finds it disadvantageous to use. Ilhan plans to use it when he encounters giant monsters. He immediately moves on to making weapons for smaller enemies. Urtha gets mad and tells Ilhan to rest. Time passes and Ilhan manages to create a lot of traps of destruction until his mana craft level reaches 24. He quickly creates one after another, and the angels are impressed by the qualities. Urtha reminds him that he just needs to create less than usual. It is because the ones Ilhan is making now are overflowing. The trap's qualities are getting better with a wider range and might overflow existing traps on Earth. The monsters might leave their current traps and go to the new traps. These might result in new monsters being born that might chew on the traps. Ilhan shivers in fear and doesn't plan to meet another tertiary class monster. He was only able to defeat the Shadow Leopard because of its stealth. He even needed help to defeat it. He can't defeat a fourth-class monster by himself right now. Hertha tells them to decrease the traps in the meantime to stop an overflow. Shuda, the white-haired angel, is annoyed that a lot of things are happening on Earth, especially with Ilhan. He tells Hertha to manage Ilhan well. Hertha corrects him, saying that they are not managing Ilhan but helping him. She was never ordered to restrict Ilhan's abilities. Shuda calls her inflexible. Urtha gets pissed off and brings out her sword. She tells Shuda to mind his own business. Shuda looks at the blade with frustration. Ilhan panics because this is the first time he sees Urtha getting mad. The other angels intervene and side with Urtha's statement. They try to calm Urtha down and make claims that Shuda didn't really mean it. Ilhan just realized that angels are not different from humans, despite being higher beings. Urtha can also act like a normal person. The three angels leave as they receive the traps of destruction from Ilhan. Ilhan and Urtha watch them leave. Urtha then apologizes for showing a shameful side of herself. However, Ilhan finds it refreshing and interesting to see that angels express their emotions. Urtha claims that angels have long forgotten about petty emotions. Ilhan wonders why Suda is still like that. Urtha tells Ilhan that it is because he is great. His talents are more than enough to make an angel feel jealous. Ilhan gets surprised at being complimented by Urtha. He gets shy because of how Urtha overestimated him. Urtha just finds Ilhan underestimating himself. Ilhan might think lowly of himself, but that might be a good quality. If he finds his talents and skills strong, he might have challenged God. Urtha doesn't even want to think about it. She decides not to think too much and speaks out loud. Ilhan gets confused by what Urtha just said. It is now time to talk about the rewards. Ilhan only wants to deal with material goods. Urtha exclaims that Ilhan might change his mind after he hears what she will say. A new dungeon on Earth has a new kind of metal, and Urtha will tell Ilhan its location. Ilhan gets excited and wants to know it now. The next day, Ilhan walks outside and notices no one is out. Urtha wonders if Ilhan remembers the time when he was all alone on Earth. Ilhan finds it different now. There are people now who fight monsters like Myray. Ilhan knows that he is not alone anymore. Urtha feels proud for some reason. Ilhan walks deeper into a forest and finds something shining. He arrives at a dungeon entrance. Ilhan is glad that the dungeon with new metal is in Korea. Because of the state of emergency around the world, he can't go overseas by boat or plane. Ilhan did think of making a plane. Urtha wonders if it is the start of something. He touches the dungeon entrance to enter it. However, the dungeon restricts entry to anyone below level 50. Ilhan complains to Urtha that he is still at level 36. Urtha asks Ilhan who he thinks she is. Ilhan quickly calls her a rude angel and a trespasser. Urtha exclaims that there is a higher being that manages the dungeons. She swipes her hand casually, and the dungeon's entry restriction gets lifted. Urtha tells him to enter, and Ilhan finds her useful now. Urtha angrily comments that she is a very great help to Ilhan. Ilhan touches the dungeon portal again, and he is able to go inside it. 
he freaks out to see the inside of the dungeon for the first time. Eartha reminds Ilhan that he is the one who made the dungeon. Eartha puts on her classes and starts a pop quiz. She asks how new monsters appear on Earth. Ilhan mentions that the mana concentration is getting higher, however, it is only a basic condition. Eartha uses rice weevils and cockroaches as examples. New monsters will appear if there is an environment that is perfect for them. Ilhan wonders why Eartha brought up the topic. She then suggests that they extract the hearts of the monsters Ilhan murders inside the dungeon. The hearts are the new metals on Earth. The miner who is already equipped with a helmet complains, why just mention it now? Ilhan is shocked to learn that the monster's hearts are the metal he came looking for, and he asks Eartha why she didn't inform him earlier. He was so excited to mine that he even prepared a boatload of mining equipment. Even Eartha is surprised to see the numerous items Elhan brought. It was thanks to an item that Elhan obtained as a quest reward, a bag with space expansion magic. Nevertheless, the space is still limited, and the weight stays the same. But thanks to his excellent physique, a few dozen tons is nothing to Ilhan. Meanwhile, Ilhan surveys the walls and sees the countless gems dotting them. He sighs in disappointment that all of those are from monsters. Eartha asks him why he's so disappointed, so Ilhan admits that he was imagining him excitedly mining the wall and then getting surprised and ambushed by the monsters. Unfortunately, Eartha spoiled the surprise and now, he can't experience something new. To fight against the monsters, Ilhan pulls out a new weapon since his spear might not be that effective against a metal monster. Thus, he'll be using a heavy battle axe that he forged earlier. Eartha can't help but marvel that Alhan seems to create rare or better items. Ilhan laments that he can only use the axe once though, since when he gets a new metal, he can again create a better one. He tests the weapon on one of the monsters called Metal Heart on the wall, and with just one hit, the metal monster dies, surprising Ilhan. He also gains a level, and his blunt weapon technique immediately reaches its max. Inside the monster, they obtain a shining chunk, which is the metal heart's heart. A metal heart can reinforce its body with mana if it detects danger, meaning that to hunt it, most parties need two individuals, one to distract it, and one to attack from behind. However, Ilhan has a stealth skill, so he can just ambush them. He takes the heart and happily heads off to find more monsters. But after a few hours, he already found the dungeon so boring since the surroundings are all the same and every monster dies in one hit. Eartha points out that he's just the one out normal. A little while later, they come upon a new enemy, a level. 74 Big Metal Heart. Ilhan pulls out his pile bunker and uses it on the enemy. With one hit, it explodes into tiny pieces. However, the pile bunker's bullet gets destroyed, so he wonders if he should just make case shots instead. From the monster's corpse, he obtains a large heart. Eartha shares that the King Metal Heart, which is the final form of Metal Hearts, has the highest durability in the world, but it won't be in that dungeon since it's a Quaternary class monster. It was rare to see a Big Metal Heart monster in the dungeon. Against all odds, however, they encounter another Big Metal Heart. Instead of using his pile bunker again, Ilhan decides to use his other weapons, specifically a huge hammer. With that, he happily continues hunting. A few days pass like this and Ilhan earned a couple of levels and materials before clearing the whole dungeon. Eartha suggests they leave now since they can just return if they need more metal. Outside, the other angels were there to meet him, and the installation of the traps of destruction all over the earth was finished. With the dungeons all over the world activating, monsters began disappearing a little at a time, and once the monsters were trapped inside the dungeons, civilization began to regain its security and stability. Korea, Japan, China, and other Asian nations are finding peace once again. On the other hand, there are also reports that quests from the other world are decreasing. Eartha explains to Ilhan that they are limiting the quest rewards till people return to Earth so they can get rid of the monsters there. Meanwhile, Ilhan has also finished blacksmithing. Thanks to his effort, he managed to make a full plate armor with not only two additional options but three. It's near impossible for an item without mana craft to have three options, but thanks to Ilhan's creator of myth title, he was able to do the impossible. Eartha advises him not to sell these items since it would be dangerous if people knew about his abilities. He also created a bunch of weapons and retired his old spear. He feeds it to the eternal flame which grows each time he feeds it. After a long day of blacksmithing, he returns home and finds that his parents have also arrived from the other world. He happily joins them for dinner while his dad leaves to go to work. 
one of their co-workers is quitting to be a hunter and he can't do that, so he must work to avoid getting fired. Before his dad leaves, Elhan pulls out a defensive shirt from his bag and gives it to his dad. He also gives his mom some too, but she expresses interest in his bag itself. The next day, Elhan goes back to his storage room to find that his workshop had dramatically changed overnight. Earthlet explains that it was his reward for his help in creating the trap of destruction. That's not all, he was also given a deadly poison resistance records, which will allow him to survive even a quaternary class monster's poison. With that, Elhan realizes he can now hunt trolls. As for his last reward, Eartha shares with him a troll dungeon location. It was in the United States of America. Elhan heads over to Ancient Airport to go to the USA. It was his first time flying so he was very excited. Eartha shouts at him that he seems to be forgetting that traveling needs a passport and a VSA, but Elhan just smiles and announces that he'll be smuggling himself into the country. Using his stealth skill, he just walks into the airport past the stewardess and into the airplane itself. He made himself comfortable in one of the seats and even stole some soda from a passing cart. He notices that there's a fighter jet outside trailing them, but Earth had explains from a guidebook that it's being flown by an ability user to guard the plane in case of a monster appearing in the sky. In order to reach Arizona where the troll dungeon is, they have a layover in Los Angeles. However, when he landed at Los Angeles airport, the airport suddenly got attacked by monsters. Eartha warns Ilhan that it's probably an overflow. An overflow is a phenomenon that occurs when a trap of destruction explodes for some reason and results in a mass of mutant monsters. It creates monsters that are much stronger than normal. The energy from the trap of destruction is also absorbed into the surroundings, in this case, changing a part of the airport into a rock desert. Meanwhile, Ilhan equips his armor in preparation for the upcoming fight. Eartha further explains that the mutants created from an overflow can react with other dungeons and cause another overflow to happen somewhere else and so on. The airport wall then explodes as humans start running away from the monsters. A security guard tries to fire his gun at the monsters, but the flame lizard monster just swats him away. Ilhan pulls out his new spear from his bag and destroys the flame lizard in one hit. The citizens running away notice that someone else is fighting and cheer him on. Meanwhile, another flame lizard breathes out a fireball and Elhan dodges it. Unfortunately, he runs directly into a fireball of another flame lizard. The people cried out at seeing him die, but thankfully his armor easily blocks the attack and he emerges unscathed. He shouts at the lizards to attack him again, but no one glances at him. Even the people had started rallying their fighters and pushing back against the monsters. It seems that after he got hit by the attack, everyone's attention moved on from him and his stealth skill made sure that no one noticed he was still alive. The human fighters and flame lizards continue their fight as Ilhan watches on. When one of the armored humans was about to be hit by a fireball, Ilhan stands in the way and blocks the attack, sating the human. He then stabs the flame lizard right in its head. The flame lizard recognizes that he is a strong warrior and starts clamoring to eat his record. The flame lizard also joins in on the action and starts piling up on him. They believe that if they get to eat a strong warrior's record, they get to evolve. The armored human Elhan saved earlier thanks him for his help and Ilhan recognizes that it was a woman's voice. He advises her to stay safe while walking away, feeling smug and handsome the whole time even though his face was covered by a mask. He continued his massacre of the flare lizards outside and he was able to level up from their experience points. Ilhan comments that the flame lizards seem to just keep coming so Eartha advises him to murder the leader first. The leader is the main cause of environmental change, and if he gets rid of it first, then it would be easier to eliminate the remaining ones. If he doesn't murder the leader, monsters will just continue to appear. Ilhan thanks her for the advice, but it's easier said than done, especially when he's currently surrounded by an army of flame lizards. All the lizards are now targeting him due to his strength, and Ilhan is forced to murder each of them with his spear. A flame lizard hurls a fireball at him, and he deflects it back into another group. The fiery explosion then creates a gap for Ilhan to jump in and stab the lizards with his spear. Meanwhile, the other fighters are amazed at his ability. It's hard for them to take one on as a group, but Elhan is taking them all on by himself. Meanwhile, Elhan jumps over the horde of lizards and surveys the surroundings. In the distance he spots the leader of the monsters, a huge gray flame lizard surrounded by his subordinates. He uses his momentum to crash onto the monsters and destroy some more lizards. Out of nowhere, 
Another fighter shouts at him in Korean to move since the leader lizard's attacks explode on contact. However, Ilhan just takes this as advice and instead blocks the leader's attack with another lizard, making them explode. The leader uses another attack and ruptures the ground, but Ilhan just rides the protruding rocks thanks to his skill learned while surfing the ocean. Unfortunately, the rocks under him explode too. Ilhan jumps out of the explosion unscathed and then pulls out his newly created pile bunker. With it, he easily lands a critical attack on the lizard leader. The other lizards rush in to help their boss and the humans slowly but surely get overwhelmed. Ilhan pulls out another weapon, this time a large great sword, and slices the lizards with it. Meanwhile, the lizard leader realizes how strong Ilhan is and then uses his remaining strength on one last attack. The whole area starts to rumble and the rocks crack as the lizard leader plans to blow the whole place up. The whole place rumbled and a lizard man fell to the ground exclaiming that they would replace humans on top of the world. The monster got bonked out of nowhere, and Ilhan told it that it had no chance at all. Ilhan got experience points and the crocodile's records. He can't believe such monsters had lower levels compared to the Black Leopard. Things were over, and everyone cheered for Ilhan. The two Korean couples he saw last time wondered if Ilhan needed some healing. Erda noticed jealousy emanating from Ilhan. Ilhan coldly told them that he was fine and asked them to do the cleanup in the area. The woman wondered if Ilhan had already gone through a tertiary class change, but the man claimed no one had reached that level yet. Meanwhile, Ilhan continues murdering the remaining lizardmen. He was anxious because if even one of them was left alive, another mutant incident would happen. Erda wondered what kind of movie Ilhan was imagining. With Erda's support, Ilhan finished off the rest of the lizardmen. He then stored the corpse in his cross bag, but Erda was unsure of what he was going to do. It was fine at first, but the cross bag suddenly got heavy and Ilhan made a hole in the concrete ground. He asked Erda for an option to control the cross bag's weight. The system finally rewarded Ilhan for completing the quest. Erda chanted something, and two angels appeared. Feta wondered what was wrong, and Erda asked for their help with mana crafting. The two can see the cross bag totally lodged on the ground and realize what was wrong. They then started applying mana to it, and the mana craft was done. Erda handed over the cross bag to Ilhan, which was now adjustable. Feta laughed suspiciously while watching them. She claimed that the person she was supervising was also on the battlefield. Ilhan got confused, and Erda explained that angels assist excellent and rare ability users. Feta mentioned that it was Nayuna, the Korean woman from before, she hoped that Ilhan could help Yuna more in the future since Yuna was blessed by the goddess of beauty. Erda warned Feta not to tell Yuna about Ilhan's abilities since his information needs to be protected. Feta can't believe Erda was being protective of a lower being. She wondered if Erda liked Ilhan. She warned her that Lyda would murder her in that case. After some teasing, the two angels bid farewell. While looking tired, Erda wondered if Ilhan would help Yuna at Feta's request. However, it would be impossible for an introvert like Ilhan. Erda then remembered giving out the rest of the rewards. Ilhan received a skill called Superhuman Strength, which can be used without mana. Ilhan was bothered by the skill's name being monster-like, and Erda reminded him that he had already learned all the skills a human might learn. Soon on the airplane, Yuna relaxed and kept looking for Ilhan. Hajin told her to keep her voice down. Yuna kept wondering out loud about Ilhan's appearance. Ilhan can nervously listen to the couple's banter. It seems like Ilhan would keep running into them. Erda told Ilhan to stop acting like his life was a movie. Ilhan wondered if Erda knew about the element of Chekhov's gun. The Russian author Anton Chekhov mentioned that if you showed a scene of a pistol hanging on a wall, then the next scene would be about firing it. Ilhan got tied up in the situation again with the Korean couple. Ilhan cooked some meat and told the two to leave. However, Yuna wanted to eat more of the giant scorpion's meat. Wondering what happened? Let us have a flashback. In a deserted canyon, Ilhan discovered a huge dungeon entrance. It was so tremendous that even a higher being like Erda didn't have any idea about it. Erda went to check it out first since she heard it was only a normal troll dungeon. After some checking, Erda noticed that it was a very rare phenomenon. Two destruction traps were accidentally placed in the same area, and the two combined to form a large dungeon. Erda warned Ilhan to be careful since there would be monsters aside from trolls. Ilhan asked for a simpler explanation, and Erda explained that there are two field bosses in this dungeon. The two arrived at Highland and immediately discovered a troll. 
The troll yawned and immediately fell asleep. Ilhan was amazed that it only took three seconds to sleep. Erd explained that trolls have resting skills, and that made Ilhan realize why troll's blood was required to level up the rest skill. Ilhan sneaked behind the troll and wore a villain-like expression. He stabbed the troll's neck and immediately died from the critical hit. Ilhan got a secondary class monster's heart and three liters of troll blood. Ilhan excitedly ran off to hunt more trolls. Meanwhile, a familiar couple arrived at the dungeon's entrance. Feta told Yuna to be careful. Hajin wanted to get the scorpion poison already so they could go back home. Yuna cheerfully claimed that it would be a dungeon date, but Hajin knew that she didn't feel that way toward him. Feta worriedly warned the two again, and the three of them entered the dungeon. Night comes, and Ilhan causally sets up camp and cooks some manga meat. Erda can't believe Ilhan was enjoying the troll's poisonous meat. Ilhan claimed that it tasted great, like beef. Just then, his deadly poison resistance skill leveled up. It would just mean that the meat was very poisonous, but Ilhan continued eating with no worries at all. Dinner ended, and Ilhan was satisfied with his cooking skills going up too. Ilhan then wondered why he was not being attacked despite cooking monster meat. Erda then realized something. Ilhan's stealth skill was so strong that it also hid the fire and smell of the meat altogether. Ilhan exclaimed that his stealth was breaking the law of physics, but Erd reminded him that the same stealth skill even fooled God. Days later, Ilhan met his 500th troll. Ilhan and Erda watched the troll rest under a tree's shade while talking about the past day's meals of troll meat only. Though Erda knew that Ilhan was happily leveling up his deadly poison resistance in cooking skills, Ilhan asked Erda to stop reading his mind. Erda told Ilhan to murder the troll already, and the monster immediately turned into pieces of meat. When Ilhan finally reached level 30, he was asked by the system to choose a secondary class. Based on the records collected, the system gave out a list of Ilhan's possible secondary classes. Erda congratulated the surprised Ilhan. It was now Erda's time to do some explaining. The Blood Lancer class is an advanced version of Ilhan's current class. The Battle Expert class would make Ilhan an expert in all weapons, including his body. The Berserker class basically makes Ilhan a psychopath on the battlefield. Herda reminded Ilhan that those three classes don't really use mana. Just then, Ilhan noticed the Rookie Reaper class. Herda thought it might be an exclusive class since it was her first time seeing it. She warned him that it might be completely different from its name, just like the Invisible Spearman. Nevertheless, Ilhan chose the Rookie Reaper class. Herda did expect Ilhan to pick something mysterious in the first place. The system then presented the task of becoming a Rookie Reaper, to destroy 100 secondary class monsters in one shot and one tertiary class monster in one shot too. Ilhan couldn't believe how difficult the task was. He can now see the reason why people never go beyond level 50. However, it was not impossible for Ilhan. Erda wondered what Ilhan's next action would be. Ilhan then claimed that he would focus on evolving his rest skill and use a mana stone to reinforce his weapon with mana craft. Yuna was being waved around like a toy. Feta kept scolding Yuna, who kept swearing to eat bell peppers from now on. Hajin was behind all the time, chasing the scorpion. Ilhan can't believe the two were having a hard time with a weak monster. Ilhan doesn't want to get tangled with the couple, but it looked like he didn't have a choice but to help. Erda then noticed that Ilhan was holding the skewer he used to cook troll meat. Ilhan then threw the skewer while coolly shouting the metal heart steel skewer's name. Erda couldn't believe Ilhan used such precious metal for a skewer. The scorpion got hit and threw off Yuna. Ilhan caught her and threw her toward Hajin. Ilhan pulled out his spear and confronted the scorpion. At point blank range, Ilhan threw his spear at the scorpion's abdomen. It died with a critical hit, and Ilhan got its experience points and records. Ilhan was surprised that its level was higher than he expected. Herda explained that the scorpion got poison and it was a bad matchup for Ilhan, who got resistant. He then wondered if scorpion meat would taste like lobster. Meanwhile, Feta tried to wake up the couple who got knocked out. Yuna then woke up and discovered Alea's dark night. She then showed a social media post highlighting Ilhan's heroic acts back in Los Angeles. Rumors had already escalated, saying that Ilhan was an FBI agent. As Erta expected, the internet really ruined things. Ilhan wondered if something had happened to Erta. Ilhan then tried to ignore them, but Yuna noticed him turning back. The couple can't help but feel amazed watching Ilhan butcher the scorpion. 
Night comes and the food-deprived couple salivates over Ilhan's cooking. Ilhan told them that the meat was poisonous. Yuna then offered to do something and use a detoxifying spell on the meat. The poison got out of the meat in visible form. Ilhan can't believe that the two have it all, looks and skills. Erta can see now that Yuna was really blessed by the goddess of beauty. Back to the present, the trio had just finished their dinner. Yuna silently stared at Ilhan. Ilhan quickly refused to say what Yuna was going to say. Yuna can't believe someone turned down an invitation from the pretty girl. Ilhan now wondered if the two were really dating. Hajin thanked Ilhan for saving Yuna and gave out his contact information. Ilhan noticed how Hajin's business card looked like Myra's. Yuna also presented her business card while telling him about their mission. Hajin quickly shut her up and dragged her away. Ilhan can feel that he will encounter them again. Herta told him to stop jinxing it. However, Ilhan would follow them on purpose since the monsters wouldn't attack him first. Yuna kept complaining about how she couldn't seduce Ilhan. She then suggested asking for Ilhan's help and giving away everything except the poison. Hajin told her to watch her mouth because Ilhan might also want the poison. Ilhan can't help but smirk because Hajin is not also watching his mouth. Yuna wondered if they should really hide information about Heaven's quest from their savior. She trusted anyone like Mai Rei and Hei Jin who had saved her before. Ilhan then wondered why they were looking for a scorpion in a troll's dungeon. He then accused Erda of trolling him because he kept predicting the future. A scorpion suddenly sneaked behind the couple, and Ilhan quickly destroyed it with his skewer. He told Erda to call it Maharsku, short for Metal Heart Skewer. Still, Ilhan can't believe the couple got into trouble before despite having a guardian angel. Erda then explained that their powers are limited on Earth, they can't always interfere too much with a human's life, and can only give clues and advice. The couple continued looking for the monster called Giant Deathstalker. Based on the name alone, Ilhan can imagine how strong the monster was. Erda was surprised to see something, and that very something loomed over the Heijin and Yuna. The monster they were looking for had appeared. It was the Giant Deathstalker. Yuna can't help but be impressed by its size. Heijin then asked for a buff. Yuna activated a buff with casual wordings, and Heijin received the buff. Heijin then charged forward. Ilhan noticed that they were paladins and healers, and thought that they could manage on their own. However, Ilhan felt he needed to help fend off other monsters like the one sneaking behind Yuna. Yuna noticed a presence behind her and freaked out after seeing the Highland Troll boss. She then ran toward Heijin while asking for help. Just then, Ilhan appeared from behind with his pile bunker. He shot the stake and pierced the troll's chest. The monster's body fell to the ground, and Heijin was shocked. Ilhan knew that the pile bunker was indeed powerful, with an attack power of 6,000, but it was only a one-time use. Erda scolded him for focusing on damage output instead of durability. Ilhan reminded Erda that he needed a huge damage output like that to one-shot murder a tertiary-level monster. Ilhan then noticed the battle on the side. He apologized and told them to continue what they were doing. Hajin and the Deathstalker looked at each other and realized that they had been fighting in the first place. Seeing that Ho Jin was in danger, Yuna pleaded for Ilhan's help. She offered all the Deathstalker's parts except for the poison. Like a real businessman, Ilhan agreed to it. Ho Jin got mad at Yuna, but Yuna pointed out that they really needed Ilhan's help. Ho Jin got distracted, and the Deathstalker captured him using its tail. Ilhan suddenly appeared behind him and slashed off the Deathstalker's tail. Ilhan raised his lay and dropped it on the Deathstalker's head. Hajin was in awe, but Yuna reminded him to attack too. His sword suddenly glowed, and he learned a skill called Chasing Strike. Erd explained that Hajin just used a skill that was influenced by the prior attack's power. It means Hajin used Ilhan's power. Even though it was a mana skill, Ilhan noticed how weak the skill was. Erda reminded Ilhan that he was on a different level. Ilhan then followed up with another attack and used his spear to strike the same spot that he had kicked before. The system shows that he got to murder the Deathstalker and gained experience points and records. The monster's body fell to the ground, and the battle ended. It didn't take long for Ilhan to butcher it and give away the Deathstalker's poison sack. Erda scolded Feta for suddenly bringing out the Deathstalker so Ilhan could help them. While thinking of eating the Deathstalker's meat, Ilhan noticed something glowing. He found a tertiary mana stone. Feta overheard him, but Erda wouldn't let her get away from her wrestling moves. Erda commended Ilhan for taking care of Feta. 
Hajin then took this chance to invite Ilhan to their clan. Yuna claimed that Mai Rei would be happy to join them. However, Ilhan coldly refused. The couple and Feta started complimenting his skills and mentioning the perks of being in a guild. Ilhan still refused since he doesn't want to join popular people. He started chanting his own dark thoughts as a loner. Herta can see that Ilhan's PTSD is flaring again. Herta then told the others to stop bugging Ilhan. Still, the couple hoped that Ilhan would contact them soon, but Ilhan doesn't want to. Now that they're gone, Ilhan's stealth is back. He now gets back to work. With the tertiary mana stone, 500 monster hearts, and 300 liters of troll blood, Ilhan finally met all the requirements to evolve the rest skill. Ilhan then triggered the skill's evolution and gained the skill of Transcendent Regeneration. The skill can help the body and mind recover from the damage dealt after an attack. Herta congratulates him for getting an expert level skill that once trained to a higher rank can revive Ilhan once he gets his heart pierced or brain smashed. Ilhan wondered when he could reach that level. Seeing that it was a great skill, Ilhan's training was all worth it. Herta smiled at Ilhan and asked if she was helpful, to which Ilhan agreed. Now Ilhan just needed a hundred secondary class monsters for his rookie reaper requirement. Herta found it terrible too, but she knew it was given to Ilhan because he was the only one meant to fulfill it. Watching the trolls, Ilhan noticed that they were moving differently than before. The known resters are now neither resting nor sleeping. Ilhan thought that they might be moving to take revenge on their boss. Herta told him to do things quickly. For the next two days, Ilhan just went around hunting trolls. One night, Ilhan realized that the trolls' numbers were now dwindling and that it was hard to meet one every hour. He can recall how the trolls acted, fearing death and being forced to run for their lives. Ilhan wondered if another monster was controlling them, but Erda assured him that there was none since Ilhan had already murdered the Highland troll boss. Ilhan then realized that it would be another monster. He finished his dinner and went back to hunt monsters. While walking around, Ilhan noticed something strange. Erda then tried to sense things with her power and found out that the exit had disappeared. Erda panicked since she couldn't contact the other angels outside. Ilhan asked her to calm down. Erda then assumed that they were in an abandoned world. Erda then explained things to Ilhan. God manages mana worlds and helps them if needed. However, there are cases in which monsters got so overpowered that they wiped out the face of the world they lived in. In that case, the heavens give up on that world. Herta tried one more time, but she really couldn't contact anyone from outside. Ilhan then reminded her that they were in Earth's dungeon, not other worlds. Ilhan suddenly sensed something and grabbed Erda. An attack almost destroyed Erda. It was a scythe. An ominous voice came out from the scythe wielder, claiming that they had found a new record. Erda exclaimed that the monster was an unrecorded one that mutated after eating other monsters and evolving. Erda told Ilhan to be careful of its unknown patterns, and the monster attacked with its scythe. Ilhan dodged the attacks and realized that it was harder compared to the troll boss. However, Ilhan can feel that he can win. He wondered if it also had stealth skills, since it went for Erda earlier instead of him. Erda then reminded Ilhan that he would be rewarded if they made it out alive and asked him not to die. Ilhan kept dodging the attacks while the monster only craved records, making Ilhan wonder about records. Ilhan only got his spear as a weapon and armor. The monster suddenly changed its attack pattern, and Erda exclaimed that it was a magic attack. Ilhan quickly leaped from the ground, escaping the red thorns that had just sprouted. Ilhan looked down at the monster and charged it with a spear attack. It was a critical attack, but Ilhan noticed that it didn't do much. It was because of their differences in levels. Erda claimed that it was already a miracle that Ilhan got to damage it. The monster realized that Ilhan was strong and asked for his records. The monster continued attacking with barrages and even scythe skills. Ilhan dodged and countered with his spear. The monster couldn't believe someone weak was strong and kept craving Ilhan's records. Irritated, Ilhan made another attack. However, the monster skillfully turned its whole body to counterattack. Ilhan got surprised, and the battlefield exploded. Ilhan surprisingly stood still and well. The monster can also use explosion skills, making his armor break. Ilhan just encountered how powerful mana was. The monster brought out another scythe from nothing and threw it at Ilhan. The scythe turned into thorns, which Ilhan dodged. Ilhan attacked again while voicing his frustration that he would use mana too someday. Surprisingly, the monster can also bring out thorns from its face. 
Heard it was also targeted, but Ilhan blocked the attack with his shoulder. It was a first for Ilhan to feel that level of pain. Herda suddenly noticed that the wound was turning black. It was basically a curse since Ilhan's deadly poison resistance was not working at all. Herda thought of doing something and flew up into the sky. She claimed that she would just be a burden for Ilhan. Ilhan told her to take a walk or something. Thorn suddenly moved toward Erda, but Ilhan disrupted the monster's moves, dealing critical damage. However, Ilhan was starting to lose feeling in his right arm. Still, he doesn't feel any despair at all, and he puts on his wolf mask. He knew that foreshadowing still needed to come true. Is Yuna part of it? Meanwhile, Erda felt bad that her powers were restricted on Earth. She also knew something about the Reaper, but she was unsure. She forgot about it for now and continued looking for someone she knew who wouldn't leave the dungeon yet. She hoped Ilhan would endure and asked God to protect him. In another area, Hajin and Yuna still can't leave the dungeon, and their escape scroll is not working at all. Just then, Feta and Yuna noticed something. Something crashed in front of them, and Feta noticed that it was Erda. Erda shouted at her and told her that it was time to repay the debt. Ilhan was still fighting the Reaper, who was still wondering why Ilhan wouldn't fall. It continued attacking while acting like a Y-man. Ilhan told her not to ask, but he still explained that he wouldn't die after surviving alone on Earth for a thousand years. He gripped his spear tightly and slashed the Reaper while claiming that he would never die there. The Reaper shrieked in pain while Ilhan fell to the ground. Ilhan can't move anymore, and the Reaper can't help but laugh. Ilhan gritted his teeth as he didn't want to die. Images of a worried Erda, the playful Yuna, his sweet parents, and his beloved Lita flashed before his eyes. He can only say that he missed Rita. This is too sad. The Reaper attacked, and all Ilhan could imagine was Lita sweetly calling out his name. Ilhan couldn't believe he was going to die, and the Reaper exploded the area with its attack. However, Ilhan was gone and suddenly rolled over to the side. The Reaper then discovered Yuna healing Ilhan from the sides. Ilhan just smirked over the fact that his foreshadowing has now been fulfilled. Yuna continued chanting a unique healing spell, and Ilhan's wounds greatly recovered. The healing power was so strong that it also removed the curse on Ilhan's right shoulder. The Reaper attacked Ilhan again, but our hero quickly dodged it. The Reaper got confused, and a healed Ilhan asked it to stop looking at him like that. He was thankful that the couple arrived on time, otherwise he would be dead for sure. Looking confused, Hajin wondered how a monster like the Reaper got into the dungeon. Yuna casually ordered him to attack and support Ilhan. The paladin took a stance and didn't have a choice but to charge forward per Yuna's orders. Of course, Yuna cast buffs on him using her holy powers. Hajin bashed his great shield on the Reaper, and the monster got surprisingly pushed back. Hajin can't believe that worked, but their guardian angel despaired over the level of the Reaper. Erda was impressed by how powerful the buff that Yuna cast was. Erda then flew toward Ilhan and checked on his condition. She suddenly asked for time, and Ilhan inquired of Hajin. How long can he endure on his own? Ilhan asked Hajin to buy some time for him. Hajin was worried, while Yuna was looking confused. Hajin confirmed that he could stall for at least 30 seconds with the help of Yuna's buffs. Ilhan then claimed that it was more than enough. Soon after, Hajin started screaming out loud while defending and receiving Yuna's buffs. Feta started worrying that Yuna might die in this situation. Plus, she doesn't care about Hajin's well-being at all. Erda told her not to worry and to put her trust in Ilhan. Feta can't help but worry since Hajin is being pushed back already. Erda then explained that Ilhan was currently hunting trolls in the area. She further claimed that Ilhan just needed to murder three more secondary class monsters to get his secondary title. As Erda explains, Ilhan just fulfilled the conditions for a title change. Ilhan finally became a rookie reaper. His stealth effect increased by 10%, and his ambush attacks increased by 30%. His attack power stat increased by 20%. His stealth skills evolution requirements were also eased. He leveled up to 53 after absorbing the records he had collected so far. Ilhan's stamina has recovered too. The wounds and curses from before are all gone. Ilhan also gained the passive skill Death Collector and started collecting the power of the lives he had destroyed. However, he didn't get any active skills since he doesn't have mana. Still, Ilhan continued running. Meanwhile, Hujin got wounded because his armor couldn't hold on anymore. He can't believe Ilhan managed to survive for such a long time against the Reaper. Seeing the Reaper going for an attack, Yuna raised a shield for Hujin.
However, the attack was strong enough to break Heijin's great shield and knock him down. Veda screamed in despair as the Reaper loomed over Yuna and Heijin. Yuna quickly used her holy powers to push back the Reaper, and the monster exploded. Erda can't believe a mere human like Yuna successfully damaged a Reaper. However, the Reaper was only knocked down for a while. Yuna kept telling Heijin to get up. Instead, the Reaper was the one starting to get up, wanting to murder them. The two knew that they would die at that moment. Just then, a familiar voice asked them to form a party. A window panel appeared showing a party of three had been formed. It showed Heijin's and Yuna's names, but the third name was all question marks. Someone stepped in, and Heijin was glad that he was back. Of course, Ilhan was stealth and hushed the two to be quiet. The Reaper was starting to wake up, and Heijin was getting worried. Ilhan commended them for doing a great job holding out. Heijin got stunned and thought to himself that he was saved, seeing Ilhan's dependable back. Yuna noticed that Heijin was already relaxed. He just realized that he was still weak after all this time. He was both upset and relieved at the same time. The Reaper finally woke up, looking for human records. Ilhan took this chance to sneak behind the enraged Reaper. Ilhan grabbed his spear tightly as he activated superhuman strength. Look at that bicep glow. At that moment, the Reaper noticed the strange power. However, Ilhan had already stabbed the Reaper with his spear. A critical hit landed, and the area exploded. Ilhan thought it was over, but he was surprised by what he discovered. The Reaper had turned into a woman with long white hair and green eyes. Tears fell from her eyes while she smiled. He thanked Ilhan, and her body started flaring. The woman's ominous energy totally dispersed to nothing. And Ilhan stood in silence as he gained a whopping 32 million experience points and increased in levels and stats. He wondered if he got tens of millions of EXP from freeing the woman from her curse. He looked at the woman's face as he got her records. Her name was Lita Karjiha, and Ilhan's skill, Death Collector, absorbed her life force. Yuna and Heijin ran toward Ilhan as they leveled up. Heijin stopped running after finding out that the Reaper had been a human all along. While the two were surprised by the woman, Ilhan started rummaging through the contents of his cross bag. Heijin then noticed Ilhan bring out a pair of cleavers for butchering. Erda immediately stopped Ilhan, who really planned to butcher her since she looked like a monster in his eyes. He doesn't care if the woman has sturdy leather, hard bones, and mana stones for crafting. Erda and Ilhan then dropped their jaws as the woman's body started turning into dust. Ilhan was deeply shocked and depressed, falling to his knees. Herta can't believe that it was a breaker. Ilhan embarrassingly inquired as to what a breaker was. Herta explained that they were those who ate mana stones and got consumed by the monster's mana. They turn to ashes when they die. Ilhan just realized that the Reaper was not a monster at all. Herta claimed that it might be an intelligent being like an elf. Ilhan looked back, feeling sad that he didn't get to butcher anything. However, he did obtain a huge mana stone. Not just that, the Reaper's scythe and armor were also left behind. Feta came flying in, informing the others that the exit had just opened. Herta noticed too that their powers were back. She assumed that the Reaper, Lita Karjiha, did something. It was a shame that she didn't get any information from her. Ilhan wondered why Erda was looking at him. Ilhan got mad for being at fault, but Erda only mentioned how cute Ilhan was. Ilhan calmed down after hearing that. The Reaper was defeated, but Erda knew that the problem was not yet solved. It was the appearance of a mysterious advanced dungeon that suppresses even the power of higher beings, a tertiary class breaker that shouldn't have appeared on Earth yet, and an abandoned world. She doesn't know what's happening on Earth, but she always knew that Ilhan would always win, as always Ilhan did things amazingly. Later, Heijin thanked Ilhan for everything. Ilhan returned the thanks since it was they who saved him from death. Heijin made it clear that they wouldn't ever get out on their own without Ilhan. Ilhan gave up and asked if they wouldn't mind him taking the spoils. Heijin was tempted to refuse, but he just let out a sigh and gave up in the end. In exchange for that though, Yuna asked for Ilhan's number. Our thousand-year-old virgin coldly refused. Yuna can't believe Ilhan rejected a pretty girl again. Ilhan can see that Yuna was indeed blessed by beauty, but he hated extroverts. Yuna then asked for his name and gave him a bright, curious look. Ilhan was pressured to say his name, and Yuna found it cool. Hajin doesn't know what he was watching anymore. This was the first time she saw Yuna be so bold with a man and get genuinely rejected despite her beauty. He sighed as he realized that Yuna and Ilhan 
are entities that someone normal like him can understand. The three soon came out of the huge portal, and a woman's voice called out Erda. An angel clad in armor appeared before them. She then asked for a brief report. Hejin can't believe an angel appeared. Erda then approached her and started giving out the details. Ilhan wondered if the angel was Erda's superior since her presence instantly took over the place. The armored angel then called out Ilhan. She thanked Ilhan for saving Erda and promised to give out rewards later. After some discussions, Ilhan was fine with her terms since he didn't even expect rewards in the first place. It was a serious incident, so she will bring Erda along with her. The armored angel turned around and announced that he would temporarily seal the dungeon. Other angels started using their divine powers on the dungeon portal. Ilhan wondered if more of these dungeons would appear in the future. However, the idea of someone creating the dungeon on purpose was also speculation. Recalling the thankful expression of Lita Karjiha, Ilhan can't help but be curious about it. He just wanted to get stronger to survive in the first place. The dungeon portal finally got sealed, and the armored angel claimed that Earth was one of those with unpredictable factors. She then shared with Ilhan that there would be more angels dispatched to Earth. She smiled and claimed that Lita missed Ilhan a lot, making her boy flinch. Ilhan was happy to know that. Ilhan then wondered if Lita had relayed a message. However, the angel started flapping her wings and bid Ilhan farewell. Ilhan wanted to hear more. Yuna and Hei Jin finally returned to South Korea. They discovered a black car, and the window rolled down. Mirei welcomed the two back and asked if they had what she needed. Yuna was happy to see her, but the brother was unimpressed that she really waited for them. Hejin told her not to worry since they had it. Yuna then started sharing stories about how Hejin got beaten up. While traveling, Mirei learned that the two met a Korean who used a spear. Yuna called Ilhan strong while comparing him to Hejin. Mirei can only think of one person with that description. Seeing her sister smile, Hejin wondered if she knew him. Mirei says no despite smiling and looking outside the window. She then thanked the two for getting her what she needed for her secondary title change. Meanwhile, Ilhan got back home but found out that no one was inside. He then noticed a note on the table. His mother went to another world to get some fresh seafood. Ilhan was impressed to learn that his mother was just casually doing groceries in another world. While taking a bath, Ilhan wondered if his mother was stronger than he thought. Compared to his time and father, his mother might be more talented. Ilhan then decided to go to his workshop before dinner. Soon after, Ilhan poured out the contents of his cross bag. However, the meat was a lot, and it would go bad soon. While butchering, he wondered if he could ask for an expiration-proof function for his cross-body bag. Just then, Ilhan felt something behind him and discovered the eternal flame. He found out that it wanted to eat meat, and Ilhan used this as a chance. Minutes later, he maniacally laughed as he cooked the meat. He was training his cooking skills while using up unnecessary meat. He lovingly fed his beloved smithing companion. Meanwhile, in the heavens, the angels conducted a meeting. An angel preceded the meeting and shared that Lita Karjiha was an elf from Deryu. Everybody started chattering about how it was too bad to lose someone talented, and they wondered how she was able to appear on Earth. The meeting leader then ordered them to be silent and gave away two main questions. How is it possible for an abandoned world to get connected with a dungeon on Earth? Also, why did it appear in a dungeon that overlapped traps of destruction? The angel then claimed that it was all thanks to Ilhan that Erda and Feta didn't die, and that he stopped the two worlds from combining. A male angel then laughed and couldn't believe that a human had managed to solve the issue. Feta intervened and mentioned that her Yuna also helped. However, the man ignored Feta and just asked how Ilhan managed to do it. He continued throwing out suspicious remarks while a certain female angel was starting to get irritated. The female didn't take it anymore and shouted out loud. She told the male angel to stop bad nothing Ilhan because she knew best how her son was a super hard worker. She exclaimed that her Ilhan was a good kid. Of course, everyone fell into silence. The meeting leader then asked for any suspicions from the angels present in the incident. Erda stood up and explained that despite having excellent skills, there was no hint of evil intentions from Ilhan. However, the male angel from before was still skeptical. The meeting leader then concluded that they should increase the number of angels on Earth fourfold for investigations. God also agreed to grant rewards to those who have shown excellent progress in restoring the balance on Earth. Like Erda and Feta, more guardian angels are to be dispatched to watch over Earth for any similar incidents. As higher beings, the angels had conflicted thoughts and feelings about associating with lower beings. 
However, they felt responsible for any incidents related to the recently abandoned world. The meeting leader, Mura, called Lita and Erda and asked them to stay behind, making Lita confused. Mira thanked them for listening and asked for their thoughts about getting ill hand rewards since they all knew him well. Lita suddenly got excited and suggested something that would make ill hand happy, but Erda told her to give ill hand something useful. However, Mira fully understood Lita's thoughts and swore to do something about them. Lita celebrated, while Erda was surprised that a stoic angel like Mira agreed to it. She can't believe that Mira made an exception. Mira then claimed that he was just carrying out God's will for the sake of bringing back the balance on Earth. Mira can also feel that Ilhan might be closer to the issue's core compared to the 7 billion returners on Earth. Meanwhile, Ilhan smiled widely as he finished creating a sword. He just realized that it was already 1 o'clock in the morning, and he totally missed his mother's cooking. Despite being late, Ilhan was still busy in his workshop, which suddenly glowed. He let out a satisfied sigh. His pile bunker with a metal heart was finally done. As usual, it was of unique grade, with damage ranging from 2,000 to 5,500. It also had the option to increase its piercing power and attack power by 40%. It was basically a brutal weapon for the sake of murdering huge monsters. However, Ilhan can see that he still needs to be careful with its durability. Ilhan also thought of making other long-range weapons since he doesn't have mana. He would die for sure fighting. He then realized something and decided to make an atlal. An atlal has a hook at its end that gives it more destructive power and range than other weapons. Plus, Ilhan got the spear art skills effects that work with atlal. Ilhan got excited and started hammering. While doing so, Ilhan noticed Lita Karjiha's armor and weapon. Ilhan continued staring at them. Seeing that it had superb stealth options, Ilhan thought he might disappear for real if he equipped it. On the other hand, the scythe had increased critical hit possibilities, but it was still lacking for Ilhan. He then decided to melt it and turn it into a spear. As usual, he asked for the Eternal Flame's help, but it suddenly got flustered. The Eternal Flame can't melt the scythe. Ilhan can't believe that there are things that the Eternal Flame can't melt, and his statement pissed off the Eternal Flame. It suddenly got bigger and burned hotter. Ilhan started cheering for the Eternal Flame. Just then, Ilhan noticed a bloody mist passed by him, and a black figure appeared behind him. He could sense that it was Lita Karjiha, and grabbed a nearby spear. Ilhan challenged it to a fight, but the bloody mist suddenly went inside the tertiary class mana stone. Ilhan was confused as to what just happened. After the black mist disappeared, the scythe started to melt. Ilhan was left confused, but things worked out either way. Two people stepped into the workshop. Erda can't believe Ilhan was using the metal from Duria. Lita can see that Ilhan was too focused to notice them. She can't help but feel proud of her Ilhan. Soon after, the Thorn Spear of Annihilation was born with a legendary rank. It has an attack power of 3,770% critical hit damage. It was considered a masterpiece, but it was still missing something. While looking at the spear and wondering what to add, a familiar person came into Ilhan's line of sight. He rubbed his eyes too hard, assuming that he had worked too hard for him to be seeing things. He got flustered when Lita coughed and sweetly asked Ilhan if he missed her. It took a few seconds for Ilhan to see that she was real and suddenly blush. Lita couldn't help but cry in joy and jump into Ilhan's embrace. It was only two months for them, but it felt like a hundred years for the busy Lita. Erda looked at them from the back while wearing a bitter expression. Ilhan suddenly welcomed Erda back and commended her for doing a good job. Erda smiled, and her expression lightened up. The three then sat down, and Ilhan couldn't believe that he had doubled the burden now. Lita got mad, calling her a burden after not seeing each other. Erda then informed Ilhan about Heaven's decision to send more guardian angels for investigation. Ilhan can see that even Heaven didn't know about the issue. Erda also shared the possibility of the same incident occurring. Lita can't believe we're talking about work again. Ilhan wondered what happened to Erda for her to agree with his words. Erda calmly explained that Ilhan was officially his ally now, and he was her savior. Of course, our thousand-year-old virgin only looked for rewards, totally ignoring Erda's expression a second ago. He then asked for his cross bag to have a rot prevention function. Erda's expression suddenly darkened, and Ilhan got scared of overstepping his lines. Erda then wondered if that was Ilhan's only request. Both Ilhan and Rita turned blank. Ilhan wondered if this was a prank, seeing Erda being so kind. 
Erta then agreed to it and added the requested function. Ilhan celebrated with his upgraded bag, but Erda insisted that he should deserve more. She then mentioned that it was not the end and told Leda that it was her turn next. Ilhan blushed as Leda presented herself. Leda lovingly stared at Ilhan like a maiden in love. Ilhan suddenly had a realization. While looking at Leda, he kept thinking of a reward that he couldn't mention even in his mind. Leda seductively asked if Ilhan was ready. With a flaring nose, Ilhan answered in a fluster. Leda excitedly told Ilhan to open his subclass window. Confused, Ilhan turned into a stone. Erda teasingly wondered what kind of reward Ilhan was thinking about. Ilhan then opened the subclass window, and a lot of subclasses appeared. One title caught his attention. He wondered what Angel's partner meant. Erda excitedly explained that, despite being restricted on Earth, his partnered angels can give them a part of their power in case the Earth encounters another abandoned world. Leda summarized it by saying that they will be together forever. Ilhan gave them a weird look and claimed that he didn't really need it. His statement was a shock for the two angels. Leda flustered wondered why, and Ilhan told them that they were not helpful during the actual battle. Leda cried because she was not helpful to Ilhan. Meanwhile, Erda spouted apologies for being a burden to the Reaper. Ilhan couldn't hold it in anymore and started bursting out with laughter. He claimed he was just joking and just wanted to see how the two would react. Of course, the first wife got mad, but the second one started acting sundier. Ilhan then tapped the subclass window, and he finally became an angel's partner. In the meantime, he can form partnerships with two angels, and his attack has increased by 30% against breakers and undead. He also got a passive skill, Angel's Blessing. Both his chances of receiving critical hits and his curse tolerance increased by 30%. Quest rewards were also increased by 30%. He can only improve his skill by meeting certain conditions, not by reaching certain levels. He can now borrow an angel's powers, and they can increase the more time he spends with them and interacts with them. Of course, Lita and Erda were designated as Ilhan's partnered angels. It was basically like a party since Ilhan could see their status together. He was more impressed by the damage increase against breakers and undead. He then looked at the two angels with expectant eyes. He happily hugged them while apologizing for pranking them. Lita can't help but smile. Erda ascertains her usefulness. He then discovered the active skill, Angel's support, and wondered if he could train it. Lita confirms that it can grow faster if Ilhan deepens the interaction with them. Look at this angel, ready to gobble up her meal. Ilhan felt something, but Lita turned off her hunger mode. Ilhan's instincts told him that something was going to eat him up. Erda got worried after seeing a different side of Lita. She then concluded the rewarding ceremony and hoped that they would continue working as usual. Though Lita wanted to do some playing first, Ilhan happily agreed. But he wanted to mana craft the thorn spear first, make a harpoon, and refine the troll's blood. Lita suddenly turned the situation into a drama, crying that Ilhan kept choosing work over her. Lita started calling Ilhan nicknames, but our boy was already focused on working. He then held up the thorn spear and used mana craft to bring out the skills of the Grim Reaper. Lita was surprised to see Ilhan use mana craft. Lita was happy that their ill hand can manage super difficult mana crafting. The thorn spear suddenly started exuding a bloody aura, covering the whole workshop. The thorn spear suddenly turned into the Dark Grim Reaper's extinct dragon thorn spear. It now has 4,000 attack power and possesses the power of a Grim Reaper. It also increased ambush damage by 30%, stats by 30%, and critical chance and damage by 150%. Suddenly, Ilhan got confused to hear that the spear was born with resentment and was for the sake of revenge against the dragons. Ilhan wondered why dragons were mentioned in the options. While Ilhan was flustered, Lita inspected the spear. She claimed that Ilhan dug too deep into its records. Lita Karjiha's world originally fell because of dragons. The option was added due to her dying wish to murder dragons. Ilhan can't believe he tapped too deep but Erda claimed that it would just mean that his mana craft was too successful. Lita assured him that with the weapon, it would be easy to fight the tertiary-class dragons. Ilhan reminded them that they missed the point. Ilhan exclaimed that this is foreshadowing. As expected of the prophet Ilhan, even Erda believed that they would fight dragons soon. Lita was left in confusion as she watched Ilhan and Erda panic over it. Feeling left out, Lita got mad and wondered why they were acting like that. Well, things happened because of Prophet Ilhan's foreshadowing. That would be the end of the first season of Everyone Else is a Returnee.
The Manwa is scheduled to return in November.